pentagonal by pyramid bond angle is 90 degree and 72 degree so these are the bond angle according to hesper but if the molecule have more than 7 electron pair that cannot be explained by that theory so for that geometry there are several rule total side electron count or pscpt theory polyhedral skeletal electron count theory जेटाइन In everywhere that if we know the electron pair, so now how can we calculate the electron pair? So we know that electron pair, total electron pair, equals to half into V plus X minus N, where V equal to valence electron of central atom. X is the number of combining atoms. Combining atoms, and n is the charge present present in the molecule. Present in the molecule, the charge present in the molecule is in the molecule. So this is the theory. He half into V plus X minus n. So now, a simple structure that from this theory you can also calculate the total number of bond pair as well as lone pair. How many bond pair and lone pair is there? So if if we go for a very simple structure, like very simple, most simple structure, I can say water. So now water, what become the H? That is total electron pair. Electron pair. Now electron pair is equal to half into valence cell. So if we, water is formed by oxygen plus two hydrogen, so now we see that valence cell electron of oxygen contains six electrons. Combining atoms are two because two hydrogen are combined together, but there is no charge. That is in zero. So that is equal to four pairs. Now according to rule, we know that if there is four pairs, so this is sp3 hybridization. Sp3 means tetrahedral. Now from that theory, we can also calculate that four pairs are there. But only two are bond. Two bonds are formed. So now we can easily say two bond pair are there and two lone pair. That means one can easily find out how many lone pair present in a molecule. That can also be found by this theory. As well as if we know the lone pair, then we can find out the bond angle also. Because we know that lone pair lone pair repulsion greater than lone pair one pair greater than bond pair one pair repulsion. So according to that, the water have a bed structure or V shape. So these are the electron pairs. Okay, so now from that way we can draw several structure, like whatever you want. You can draw any structure, like suppose ICL four plus and ICL four minus. This is a very important question. The what are the structural difference between two? So if we go for ICL four, then H equals two. We can say iodine has seven electron in its valence cell, four chlorine in its four. And one positive charge is minus one. 
So half into 7 plus 4 minus 1. That is total pair of electron is 5. So if it is 5 means it is TBP. Trigonal 5 parameter. TBP geometry. Now if it is TBP because the pair is 1 minute. So now, the term to TBP. Okay. So if it is TBP, then what is the geometry? Because we, we see that there are four bond pairs. So that means there are four bond pair and one lone pair. Okay. So four BP plus one L. That is the simple way. So now how can we do? That is the structure I CL 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 and one is lone pair. So this is a positive charge. So the gm shape of the molecule is CSO. We know that if TBP contain one lone pair, then it is called CSO geometry. Okay. So this is the origin of CSO. And ICL for minus. So ICL for minus means half into 7 plus 4 plus 1. Now negative charge, so that is our equation is minus x minus n, so minus n minus equal to plus 1. So now that becomes 6, that means octahedral. If it is octahedral, octahedral all bonds are equal. So now these are the CL, CL, CL. So this is the structural difference between these two. And you have a negative two. So that way we can draw the structure of CO3 2 minus, SO3 2 minus, SO4 2 minus, NH4 plus, everything. We can draw the structure by that theory. And among these, there are some questions that how many electrons I, who are isoelectronic? Then we have to consider the isoelectronic species means total number of valence electrons. Suppose CO3 minus. CO3 2 minus means 4 plus 3 into 6 plus 2. That is equal to 24. Total electron. Now SO3 2 minus. So 6 plus 6 into 3. 6 into 3 plus 2. That is equal to 26. So these two are not isoelectronic. So isoelectronic means you have to consider all the valence electron present in that every atom, each and every atom. That is isoelectronic. Sometimes there is questions ask them that what are the isoelectronic species. Now there are some theory that we can predict the bond angle according to that theory, that VSEPR theory. How can we predict the bond angle? Suppose that is the rule one or rule two. But now if we go, suppose if we go for lone pair bond pair interaction, suppose there are NH3 versus NF3. Another one I can write here NH3 versus TH3. So, what would be the bond angle, expected bond angle? So we know all are sp3 hybridized, nitrogen is 5 and 3 hydrogen, so all are sp3 hybridized. By what actually happened here? In ammonia, nitrogen is there, lone pair is there, and 3 hydrogen are there. Okay. Similarly, for NF3 also same. So you can see that for NF3 also, like nitrogen, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. Okay. So repulsion. These are the lone pair. So, 
what actually happened here you see that in ammonia it is 107 degree but it is 102 degree general so we see that if the electronegativity of the combining atom increases bond angle decreases similar example you can see exactly similar example you can see oh2 versus of2 water here bond angle is 104.5 degree here we see 103.2 degree but why because we can see that repulsion by a bond pair decreases either electronegativity of the central atom bonded to the central atom decreases you see that electronegativity of hydrogen is lower than that of chlorine okay so the bond pair is pool between the two bonded atoms every there are bond pair electron there are also bond pair electrons so bond pair are pulled by the atom now as the more electronegative atom is attached with the nitrogen then it pulls the bonded electron pair towards itself as a result the repulsion by a bond pair bond pair repulsion reduces that's why bond angle decreases so this is the reason reason what is the reason that due to the electronegativity so electronegativity of electronegativity of the combining atom combining atom pull the bonding electron pair towards itself and hence pp pp repulsion reduces pp pp repulsion reduces so bond angle decreases here what happened ammonia first thing so this is the surrounding atom now here is the central atom ammonia and nitrogen is central atom first for us so here we see 107 degree here you can see first thing 93 degree almost about there so now what happened here ammonia first thing so their phosphorus atom contain or nitrogen atom contain three bond pair and one lone pair that means if you see one lone pair and three bond pair okay in phosphorus also the same so here what happens that reverse phenomena as the electronegativity of the central atom increases bond angle increases you see similarly h2 versus h2s there are so many reasons are there but we have to remember that as the electronegativity of the central atom increases bond angle also increases there are reason also they are 92 degree because there are pure three orbitals are there lone pair is there so lone pair bond pair repulsion compresses the bond angle almost to 90 degree larger space availability due to the phosphorus or sulfur okay that's why the bond angle differences so there are that type of questions are there sometimes multiple bond also increase the increase or decrease the bond angle also so now there are some limitations in here again on geometry suppose you have to remember that pi bond do not take part hybridization you know everyone know do not take part hybridization take part hybridization so you have to consider during the calculation of the theory that pi bond where the pi bond is from who which element of form pi bond like oxygen sulfur nitrogen they form pi bond so when these atom are bonded with the central atom so combined with the central atom then we have to remember about the their hybridization take part the participation in hybridization such that that they cannot interfere that they cannot interfere okay they cannot interfere as a result during the calculation of suppose you if you want to go for carbon dioxide structure carbon dioxide you know that carbon plus two oxygen now we know that carbon gives four electron in its valence cell so four plus two oxygen gives two but we know that oxygen always from pi one to fulfill your oxygen so that is minus three Again, because pi one do not take part in hybridization, so we can consider it two. Two means they speak. 
that is linear but when because pi bond is not determining factor for the hybridization as well as the geometry so now the structure becomes c double bond o double bond o pi double bond o to fulfill up one is pi bond another one is sigma bond that means if you go for suppose if you go for draw the structure of so4 i just give one example suppose if you want to go for the draw the structure of so4 to minus now we know that h equals to half into sulfur balance and six electrons now four oxygen is four minus four plus two charge this is the charge this is due to oxygen and pi one so now it is become four pair that is sp3 regular sp3 sp3 hybridization all are bond pair because four oxygen are there now how can we draw the structure because now we know that there are total four oxygen now if we put the four double bonded then sulfur becomes excess to the s valence sulfur maximum valence is six so you do not put more than six bond around the sulfur so what will be the situation of that oxygen that is the minus so s over two minus in everywhere we have to draw that way in everywhere and another thing if sp3 hybridization is there plus one lone pair one lone pair then we say that it is pyramidal you have to remember that okay sp3 hybridization but you have two lone pair then we call it is bent molecule or v shape you have to remember that things if there are sp3 d plus one lone pair then you have to remember c so if there is sp3 d hybridization but two lone pairs are there then you have to remember it is t shape if sp3 d plus three lone pair then the geometry become linear if sp3 d2 plus one lone pair it is called square pyramid square pyramid if sp3 d2 plus two lone pair it is called square planar if sp3 d3 plus one lone pair then it is called distorted octahedron okay so now what is the example pyramidal ammonia bent water c so sf4 t sep clf3 linear i3 minus square pyramidal like if5 square planar xcf4 and our distorted octal xcf6 so you have to just remember according to the geometry if the lone pair is present what will be the their set these are the set because set and geometry both are the two different terms so you have to remember these things now if we consider about the bond angle then what happen for there are some ex, uh, exceptions like of2 versus ocl2 there are some exceptions are there because this is one angle or electronegativity increases surrounding atom so one angle should be increased but here reverse happens so here 103 degree here 111 degree this is due to the two reasons one reason is like and you can consider so oh so one reason is 104.5 degree so what are the reason it so that reason is both are sp3 hybridized like that x there are two lone pair okay so when the chlorine is there there is a probability for the lone pair lone pair there is a sorry lone pair to vacant d orbital overlap back bond due to back bonding bond order increases for chlorine o cl if it is cl if x is cl then what happen that partial double bond character is there and due to that bond pair bond pair repulsion increases so bond angle should increase another thing is due to the larger size of chlorine so two things are there there is a possibility of d pi d pi d pi d pi d pi back bond so this is the d pi d pi back bond as well as 
the larger size of collagen that two factor enhance the bond angle little bit from the regular factor at a given time another example very important example no2 plus no2 and no2 minus here we say that this is 180 degree because it is linear when it is no2 so it is linear on 80 degree but why when it is no2 then it is you saw that 134 degree but when it is no2 minus what happen so you have to draw about the picture so now so it is like 115 degree but why this happen because you see that nitrogen have positive charge so it is linear geometry like a plus coordinated o double bonded o so 180 degree no problem but when no2 there are one odd electron if you see the structure of no2 there is a odd electron so now odd electron bond pair that is oxygen so there are the sigma and pi bond so bond pair bond pair repulsion but here you see that seven electrons around the nitrogen because nitrogen has five you see nitrogen has five no2 and valence cell so now what is the hybridization the three electron pairs and a lone pair so that is the odd electron in no2 and that odd electron repulsion reduces you see that that odd electron repulsion odd electron bond pair repulsion enhances the and also double bond there are one more bond pair bond pair repulsion also there so the lone electron has some repulsive effect on the other two pairs and hence the bond angle is much less than 180 degree to 134 but when it is no2 minus the my negative charge is in oxygen atom like that way in double bond o there is lone pair and o minus so here also the bond angle should be ideal should be 120 degree but it has some and reduces due to the repulsion and that repulsion in it decreases the bond angle to 115 degree so that is the several bond pair or lone pair related questions of geometry of the questions so this is one type of questions and another effect or another type of questions also are there so now i have some questions to solve it okay then we will go for the current first question if a molecule mx3 has zero dipole moment the sigma bonding orbitals used by n atomic orbital atomic number less than 21 are what would be how can we solve it this is very very important questions so we have mx3 type like bf3 type molecule mx3 having zero dipole moment means that type structure because this will know zero dipole moment. what is dipole moment that is the bond polarity because x we are that way so that tend towards so resultant is that way. so now mu equal to zero so this gem this type geometry has dipole moment zero so now if the dipole moment is zero so what is the hybridization this is sp2 okay now which are the following molecular species are there now till now we are not discussing about this length of hydrogen bond ranges this is informative questions so here we have to remember that hydrogen bonding what is hydrogen bonding now when hydrogen bonded with either oxygen or fluorine or nitrogen this is called hydrogen bonding when hydrogen interact with oxygen more electronegative element like oxygen fluorine and nitrogen in some cases also fluorine in chloral if you go for chloral then you see that hydrogen also form a hydrogen bond with the chlorine in chloral and hydrogen bonding what are the application of hydrogen bonding we know that hydrogen bonding is a very weak bond weak weak interaction and this enhances the uh, boiling point melting point of a substance this enhances the acidity basicity this has some effect on acidity basicity and also we know that ketoenal tautomerism also depends on hydrogen bonding that a lot of factors but if there is a question length of hydrogen bond ranges from so it is 2.5 to 2.75 angstrom you have to remember that that and what is the hydrogen bond energy bond energy what is the value hydrogen bond energy for to 40 maximum 40 kilo joule per mole sometimes it is written is 4 to 10 but there are several examples of there 4 to 40 also present 
Now next question is the compound of the type oxygen double bond PX3 of the phosphorus atom exhibit bonding type P5, 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 P5 what type of bonding? We have to find out. So we know that PX3 X, X, X. Now oxygen is there. We know that oxygen has lone pair and phosphorus has vacant the orbital. So it overlap this to fulfill octet. Now P become double bond O. X, X and X. So now what type of bonding this is? This is bonding of oxygen to phosphorus. That means P pi D pi bonding. Not D pi D pi. So P pi D pi bonding. This is This is a very important question. Maximum bond energy existing. This is informative question. There are C oxygen and nitrogen, nitrogen, C chlorine and C C. So this is very very important questions because the correct answer is C C H T due to the same symmetry and same orbital matching. The electron difference here are not important. Electronic difference is not important because carbon has a role. That's why carbon can form cation. Carbon has cation property and can form lot of compounds like that. Next, this is the M O diagram question. Yeah, which of the following pairs contain isostructural pieces? This is very good question related to today's teaching. So, which of the following pairs contains isostructural pieces? You see. CH3 minus, we have to calculate CH3 minus means carbon has 4 plus 3 plus 1. That is 4, that is sp3. But CH3 please, CH3 plus half into 4 plus 3 minus 1. That is equal to 3, that is sp2. So not isostructural. Now come to NH4, we know that NH4. 5 plus 4 minus 1, that is sp3. Ammonia also sp3 with lone pair. Now SO4 2 minus it is sp3. And this will be BF4 minus I4. BF4 minus also sp3. Tetrahedral. NH2 minus and BF2 linear H1 So this C option is correct because both are sp3. Because SO4, sulfur at 6 in SO4 2 minus, if we calculate, up into 6 plus 4 minus 4 plus 2 that is equal to n that is 4 pair so 4 means all are 4 pair so regular tetrahedral and we have 4 minus also same boron has 3 plus 4 plus 1 So, boron has 3 plus 4 plus 1. Now, it is also sp3. So, these both have sp3. But no lone pair is there. That means, they are regular tetrahedral. So, these are the isostructural pieces. Anybody have some questions? Nature of interparticle force in benzene. Which type of force is benzene? This is everyone knows that we discuss a very simple question. The octahedral shape associated with which one is the octahedral shape? You see PF5. First plus 5 valence cell 5 pro, 5 5 10, that is SP3D. SF4, SP3D with all on pair. T, tellurium, 6 plus 6, 12, octahedral. CLF3, SP3D. So now TF6 is the correct answer. How can you calculate? Because we know that same theory. Half into tellurium has six valence cell electron, six proton have six, that is equal to six pair, six pair means of the hydrogen. Now there is a question the maximum possible number of hydrogen bonds in which water molecule can participate. Suppose there is a water molecule, how many hydrogen bonding are there? How many molecules hydrogen bonding? If we look at the structure of water molecule, maximum hydrogen bonding how much? 
So the maximum height of the is present in eyes, structure of eyes. If we look under the structure of eyes, then what can we see? There also are H, O, H. There also another oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. There also hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. There also oxygen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. So if this is our central oxygen, Water molecule. Then how much water molecule are there? One, two, three, four. Because we know that geometry of eyes is just tetrahedra. So this is the geometry of tetrahedra. So how many molecule? Water. Four. Now the forces present in the crystal of naphthalene. That everybody know. That is Van der Waals. Yes, that is a very good question. Two elements have electronegativity is one point two and three point zero. One point two and three point zero bond formed between them would be what type of bond? That ionic polar covalent. That you see that difference in electronegativity. That is delta chi equals to three minus one point two. That is equal to one point eight. So it is less than one point nine. If the value is less than 1.9, then we can say this is some sort of covalent type. That is polar covalent. If it is greater than 1.9, then it should be ionic. So now it is polar covalent. You have to remember that data. Less than 1.9. You say that is a very good question. In which of the following species the interatomic bond angle is 1090 degrees? That means regular after regular tetrahedral. This means regular tetrahedral. Which of the geometry of the molecule is regular tetrahedral? Then you can solve it easily because we know that regular tetrahedral NHC BF4 minus. It is pyramidal. It is after tetrahedral. NH4 plus BF. It is SP3, SP2. SP3, SP3, but this is pyramidal. It is pyramidal. Ammonia have small lone pairs. Ammonia be a four minus. That is not possible. Same question. Why? NH2 minus and BF3. NH2 minus. What is the geometry? NH2 minus means it is SP3. This is SP2. So there are no option. It looks like correct. So this should be NH. There should be the option should be like NH4 plus and BF4 minus. That option, if there is some options, maybe some wrong type of error. So this option should be correct because NH4 plus have the yes, regular after bond angle as well as BF4 because there are no lone pair. In both molecules no lone pair. If there is a lone pair, then there is some repulsion. That's why the bond angle should be changes from 109 degree to 180 minutes. This is the theory. If the bond angle of any molecule changes, means there are some lone pair, or maybe some pi bonding, which is double bonded. Form. That's why bond angle sometimes changes. So the option should be correct. Should be NH4 plus and BF4 minus. That should be a correct option. Now among the following molecule, which have trigonal planar structure? XCO3, SO3, BF3, and ammonia. You see, XCO3 xenon has eight electron, so it is sp3. Sp3 with one lone pair means it is pyramidal. Bf3 sp2 planar, so it is pyramidal. It is planar. Okay. Bf3 it is planar. SO3 sulfur 6 and 3 oxygen that means planar ammonia pyramidal planar all of that so right correct option is D BF3 and SO3 both are planar now next question among the following maximum covalent character if we go for the covalent character then we have to know about the phasance 
What is Khajan's rule? Khajan's rule so that What is Khajan's rule? The Khajan's rule tell about the covalent character in an ionic compound. It so that covalent character in a molecule. At a molecule, covalent character generate for the explain for As for example, what are the rule? Who saw the uh, covalent nature? A small size cation. And large size anion. Second is high charge on both ions, means cation and anion. That means if we combine these two points, that is higher polarizability. This is the main phenomenon polarizability. Polarizability, okay. Third of the pseudo inert gas geometry. Pseudo inert gas geometry means we know that inert gas means 2, 8, 18, 36 electrons are there. That means S and P cell are there, noble gas. They are so inert gas geometry. Inert. But pseudo inert means cells are filled, but they are not inert. Cells are filled, but not inert. But not inert. As for example, you can say. Zinc. You see zinc 2 plus. This is 3D10. That means pseudo inert because the orbital is fulfilled. Copper plus so on. That is the orbital fulfilled D10. So they are called pseudo inert. Understand? They are not inert, but they are electronic configuration so that inertness within the molecule. Okay. So now among the following maximum coherent character. So that is more size cation Ap2 plus. SN2 plus Mg2 plus, but here is positive charges plus the aluminium. So, this is the covalent. High charge on ions. Aluminium have highest charge among the four. So, that way we have to solve. Now, I will discuss little bit about molecular orbital theory. Okay. I will discuss about now molecular orbital theory, little bit. We know that atomic orbital combine together to form molecular orbital. This we know. That 2AO minimum combine together to form 2MO. One is bonding MO. Another one is anti-bonding MO. Okay. Anti-bonding MO. Now we know that if we go for the bonding and anti-bonding MO, there are several questions are there. Bonding MO has low energy, whereas anti-bonding MO has high energy or higher energy. Okay. Or higher energy. So this is the concept of bonding MO and anti-bonding MO. And then what? We have to know about that, that how bonding and anti-bonding MO is formed and what are their symmetries. Okay. What are their symmetries and how they are formed? So, we know that, that MO theory is developed on basis of some drawbacks in the valence bond theory, which was given by Pauli. And this theory, molecular orbital theory was MOT, was given by Mulika. It is given by Mulika. Okay. In 1935. So, why this theory developed? We know that the, the valence bond theory cannot explain the magnetic property of some molecules. That's why it's come. So, atomic orbital combined together to form molecular orbital. What are atomic orbital? We know that the probability of finding an electron around the nucleus, the 3D space is called atomic orbital. And when they combine together, just two atoms combine together, two or more atoms combine together to form molecule, they are also two atomic orbital combined to form molecular orbital. The question is the number of atomic orbital combined equal to the number of MO is formed. 
What is bonding? What is energy bonding? The lower energy is called bonding. That is stable. Higher energy is anti-bonding. Okay. And during the formation of MO, the electron field of is followed by Pauli's expulsion principle, above principle as well as Mohn's principle. That we have known previously. So now, the condition for the formation of MO, what are the conditions? We know that the bonding MO results when the sign of the wave functions or symmetry of the lobes of combining A with the same. When two AO combine together, they must have the sign of the wave function, that is the symmetry. That means same symmetry. This is the main criteria. Symmetry must be same, then it is called bonding. If the symmetry is different, then it is called anti-bonding. Same symmetry bonding. If it is different symmetry, then anti-bonding. Suppose if different symmetry, then anti-bonding. How it is formed? I, I just saw. Suppose this is orbital. This positive charge not is any charge. These are the to represent the symmetry of the molecule. You see the positive. This is not charge. So this combined together to form that MO. Okay. This is called two S orbital combined together. So this is S S bonding MO. Bonding MO. And we know that S orbital only forms sigma bonding MO. That's why called sigma MO. But when the symmetry is different, like this is S. This is another S. This is from different symmetry. Then what happens? They repeal each other and are apart from each other. That's why called S is anti-bonding MO. Anti-bonding MO. That is sigma star. Now, you see, the internuclear axis joined between these two electron density above and below the internuclear axis. Okay, since this is the, the internuclear axis where it is joined, the electron density resides on it, so that should be G symmetry. So it is called psi G or sigma G, erade. But when the separation, it is called sigma U or, so this is the difference between G and U symmetry. So I will discuss later the what are G symmetry and what are U symmetry, how the symmetry comes. So there are a lot of things you have to know about the molecular theory. So now, so first condition is the condition for the formation of MO should be same symmetry. That is the first criteria. Second criteria is the the combining atomic orbital must have comparable energy, comparable energy or degenerate, or degenerate. And third is the comparable state. So one is never combined with 5S or 5D. Now we know about the bonding and anti-bonding. Now question, what is anti-bonding? How, no, how non-bonding is formed? How non-bonding form? Then we can say that when the AOs, atomic orbitals, which are not involved, which are not involved in bonding, which are not involved in bonding, atomic orbitals, which are not involved in bonding, and do not suffer any change, and do not suffer any change, and do not suffer any change in the overall energy, in the overall energy, is are called non-bonding, are called non-bonding. That means some atomic orbitals which cannot involve in bonding and their overall energy will not change, remains same, they are called non-bonding.
and that bonding non bonding phenomenon also play important role for the formation of sigma and pi bonding also what are sigma bonding we know that if the two lobes are pointing along the axis joining nuclei called sigma and when the above and below the plane are called pi so now we have no little about lca linear combination of atomic orbital what are lca so we know that if it is bonding then if two wave functions suppose psi a and psi b are two wave functions they combine together and form they combine two two are the atomic orbital from psi bonding and psi anti bonding that is psi star so psi bonding means n into complex conjugate sorry lambda into psi b that is psi anti bonding means n into psi a plus minus lambda of psi b bonding means come close to each other anti bonding means are apart from each other okay so wave function which are the same sign may be regarded as the wave side at the same phase or same plane and they combine together to give a resultant wave this leads to the enhancement of the electron density with the nuclear and therefore they form the bonding m to see the bonding m the enhancement so it is repaired by either psi or psi b so now question what are the lambda and what is the a lambda is called you see lambda here also lambda there also lambda in both cases so lambda is called mixing coefficient how much mixing takes place between two orbital mixing coefficient is called lambda what is the n n is the normalized constant for normalizing constant normalized constant okay now wave function is a different signs that is maybe out of phase two wave functions have different side then they can form the anti bonding right that means we can write n into psi a minus lambda into psi b. that means lambda also measure lambda also measure the extent of bonding whether a bonding is formed or not and it is calculated that for homonuclear diatomic molecule lambda equal to 1 for homonuclear diatomic molecule homonuclear diatomic molecule so lambda value is 1 now if we go for the like previous theory that is given by heisenberg and then schrodinger eigen value eigen function we all are know that zero to infinity psi psi star delta equals to 1 so now what is the psi psi star psi is cos psi psi star means the if psi is a wave function the psi star is complex conjugate and delta is the small volume and then it is 1 so what is psi square delta we know that psi has no meaning we already in atomic structure we know let me write psi has no meaning but psi square has meaning so psi square delta is the probability of finding the electron at volume delta that is probability of finding electron at the volume delta probability of finding electron at volume delta finding electron at volume delta that volume how can we find out the electron if we consider the normalized function is that is n equal to 1 then we can write psi equal to psi a plus psi b and psi star equal to psi a minus psi b can write n is normalized constant which measure the probability of finding an electron in the mo is unity we know that if it is normalized constant then we can see psi psi star delta over 1 if it is normalized okay so that value you know, we can find the mo now if we diagram if we ask if someone asks that draw the potential energy diagram for the bonding and anti bonding suppose if it is the potential energy bar p 
and this is the radius that is the from the nucleus to the orbit orbital and there are two orbitals suppose you may consider this is psi a okay and another orbital like psi b okay so this is for a atom this is for b atom okay we know that psi has no meaning but psi square has meaning so now we can see that what we can see we can see that when psi bonding is formed psi b means psi a plus psi b for whole harmonic diatomic molecule now psi b square equals to psi a square plus psi b square plus 2 psi a psi b because why we do psi b square because psi has no meaning only psi square has the meaning that's why you have to draw now if they combine together to form bonding part of the geometry or structure figure now if it come for bonding then what it looks like now if it is a potential energy part if this is the radius radius this is the intensity of the potential energy intensity of p then we can write this together combine that means start here here and here now they combine together because they form bonding so this is the a molecule atom this is b atom and now the gm curve which is formed this is called psi b equal to psi a plus psi b that is the combination between two atomic orbital combination make resulted now if we go for the psi square how it looks like now someone asks you what would be the geometry it is psi square Now this psi b. So what would be psi b if we differentiate it? Their intensity should be that way. So this is the psi b square. That means psi a square plus psi b square plus two psi a psi b. Okay. This is for a because if we derivative if we double derivative. derivative it then we get psi b square so double derivative give the higher intensity now suppose if they form anti bonding they are not form either symmetry or different then what happen actually so anti bonding gives suppose this orbital and another one gives this orbital so this is the anti bonding property so that means psi star equal to psi a minus psi b because you see that in previous slide we saw that psi r psi b to a function these are the two a functions so when these two a functions Abstract to each other, then one go below another. That's why the structure looks like that way. So this is the A, and this is B, and this is the node. We can say. And if we go for the psi star square, then what it looks like? Because if we derivative is one negative term, it go to positive. That means. that way so this is called so this is the a this is b this is node okay and the curve is called psi b star or psi a square that means psi a square plus psi b square minus 2 psi a psi b so now a new term we see that 2 psi a psi b here plus 2 psi a psi b All terms are equal, and here minus two psi psi. So that two psi psi is the limit which can define differentiate between these two, which is called overlap integral. Overlap integral that is equal to two psi psi b, which is represented by capital S overlap integral. And we know that from that equation, there are several equations are there. So you can, you have to know about these two equations. Sometimes there are some numericals in competitive exam that n b equals to n b means normalized function. The n for harmonic or diatomic molecule, n b equals to root over of One by two plus two s, where two s is the 
overlap integral and and n a n a means for anti bonding orbital normal is constant equal to 1 by 2 minus 2 this equation you have to remember if you need then i can derive it but we do not need any derivation for the equation and from that we can see that if a is equal to 0 that is overlap integral overlap integral is 0 then we can write psi b equals to 1 by 2 psi a plus psi b because we know the previous equation n into psi plus psi b and psi star or psi a, a equals to 1 by 2 into psi a minus some factors I can say that overlap integral a is equal to some summation of psi a into psi b into d tau as an approximation right? we, we can consider so now which have a non-zero value this must have a non-zero value you have to remember non-zero value never be zero now questions so for bonding you have to remember for bonding s greater than zero second for anti-bonding s less than zero and third one for non-bonding situation if arise, then we can write overall integral is equal to zero. So now we can conclude that S serves as a criteria for bonding, anti-bonding, and non-bonding. It's consistent with the earlier assumption. So S can define whether there is a bonding orbital, anti-bonding orbital, or non-bonding orbital. Okay. So today I have finished here. In next class, we will discuss about details of molecular orbital theory. And we have several questions of that to 